Tales from the Tavern was recorded in front of a live Twitch audience. Everybody, we are back with this week's episode of Tales from the Tavern. I have such a fun group of guests. I've been so excited about this, especially since our group chat blew up the other night. Uh, we essentially were writing, writing a uh, uh, a TTRPG that had to do with Gordon Ramsay and kitchens and nightmares and all kinds of fun stuff like that. Um, I went on to have a dream two days ago about competing on a Gordon Ramsay uh, show. It was some cross between Hell's Kitchen and MasterChef, and I somehow made it through the first two eliminations, so go me. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk TTRPG. So I would like to go around and have everybody introduce themselves so, uh, so we can get to know you all a little bit. Adam, we're going to start with you. Tell us a little about who you are and what you're up to these days. Hi, I'm Adam. Uh, I'm a writer, general tabletop creator, uh, author of Folklore, a superhuman uh, horror webcomic that you should go check out. And this year is pretty much all about tabletop for me. I've, I've spent the last year working on a uh, campaign uh, called Teldramir, which is uh, supposed to be for in-store and also for hopefully in the future school and uh, multi-party use. Um, I do uh, writing adventures, um, any any sort of uh, modules, uh, characters, uh, monsters. I kind of kind of do it all. Uh, that's that's me. Awesome! Uh, mm -hmm. I'm excited to have you back on again. <laughs> um, Thank you. And making her stream debut tonight, right now, Jessica. Tell us a little about yourself. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Jessica. A lot of you know me from Twitter or Instagram as Ina Coffin, uh, Ina underscore K O F F E N. Um, it is a pun. <laughs> it's a plan for it. Uh, my brother and I actually came up with what we were talking about what would be our drag or stage names. Uh, but most of you know me as a TTRPG artist. Um, I've worked and collaborated with a few different people on their publishings that they've done. Uh, with my husband, Alec Azam, I do a lot of the art for his publications. Um, and besides that, I do a lot of D&D, obviously, with a professional DM at home. I'm in five games a week, so I have a lot of characters, a lot of voices, and just a lot of fun, um, and I'm just really excited to be here. So thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on. I'm so excited to have you. Um, yeah. And also, uh, you are open for commissions right now, is that correct? Uh, yeah. I am working on one right now for that's a seven person group shot, uh, but I'm about halfway through there. So I am taking commissions right now. But you're all going to have to get in line behind me because I need to message her and <laughs> get a commission done. So that's a thing. Um, I'm excited to have you. I'm really looking forward to getting to chat a little more. So, um, so thank you for coming to hang out tonight. Jason, tell us about you. Hi, everybody. I'm Jason C. on the Discord, but everywhere else in the socials, I am Shadowmain. S-H-A-D-O-M-A-I-N. Uh, I write articles on my own blog and at Cobalt Press all about RPGs. Um, I do a lot about teaching RPGs to first-time players. I also am a forever DM and creator. I have a few modules published on um, Drive-Thru RPG. 
for D&D and for the Cypher System games, including my latest one, which is called Hint, because it's inspired by a certain classic murder mystery board game that you may or may not have heard of at some point. <clears throat> <laughs> I love that. I love that so it's... much. That sounds great. Um, well, thank you for coming on. I'm excited to have you back <laughs> as well. And uh, Tommy, a.k.a. Math, how are you? Hey, I'm well. Thank you so much for having me back. I appreciate your time and everybody else's as well. Uh, I'm Tommy, Math Productions. Uh, you can find me at Math333 on Twitter, Facebook, any other social, uh, mathproductions.com. I'm a commission miniature painter, battle map maker, and TTRPG designer. Uh, I also sponsor and produce uh, other artists and content creators as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, visit visit the website, check us out. I appreciate you guys so much for having me on, and I can't wait to uh, talk about all things TTRPG tonight. I am excited to have you back. And if you guys were watching last week, uh, I think it was last week or a couple weeks ago, I was showing off my uh, my mini my mini gem dragon um, that uh, that Tommy painted for me, and I will show that off again this week if anybody wants to see it. So, I I love it. It hangs out right behind me. Um, Thank you so much for the opportunity to paint it for yeah. you. Yeah. <clears throat> Taylor. Hi. I'm back. I'm so excited. Um, I know, me too. I don't know how many times I've been here now, but I love it. It's the best. Um, yes, I'm Taylor. Uh, Tay. I think I know most people from the Twitter, but uh, I don't know. I, my thing is podcasting, so I'm one of the three working sad little artists that decided to make one more thing which was a podcast and it didn't take any time at all just kidding it's a eat in our lives it's backwater bastards the sci-fi comedy improv space opera that we made our own game system for or rather our dm made it we just break it every day and try to understand it um yeah and i live now on a couple of other streams uh, specifically, none of them have started yet, so I had to ask permission to talk about them. <laughs> um, <laughs> but they're both, believe it or not, D&D, &D, which is not really what I normally do, so, you know, come and stop by if you want to hear me uh, mess it up. <laughs> I'll be playing a grandma and, uh, you know... A weirdo, which is kind of in my wheelhouse. But yeah, that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That would be I watching you play a grandma is probably going to be like the <laughs> highlight of anything. <laughs> it's definitely gonna be at you know, I'm already like I feel like I'm already there. After like the past two years, I'm like I've aged three hundred years. So that's fair. I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, that's totally I'm ready. fair. <laughs> All right. Well, for chat, if this is your first time joining us for this stream, let me tell you a little about the way that it works. All of our questions come from you guys. They all come from chat. So it, we would love to take your questions. We are open to any questions about TTRPG content, um, characters, games we've played, all of that stuff. And uh, just go ahead and drop those right in the chat. And uh, one of our moderators will make sure that we uh, we see those and we can talk about them on uh, right here on stream. And uh, for those of you who have been around for a little while and have some channel points racked up, you can go ahead and use the Ask My Question Next feature for a thousand channel points. You can have your question bumped up to the top one in the queue. So uh, we have that available up to three times in the evening um, as so to make sure that we have time to get to just about all of the questions that we get to. But uh, we have we have questions pouring in already, which is very exciting. We've also had a request hey. to see the dragon. So here is <laughs> oh, the dragon. here is my gem dragon Ooh, that's a beautiful color yeah it's kind of hard to see but it's like a purple a really light purple um because wow. purple is my favorite color so uh so tommy did that and now he he is as i said last week he is my geist dardian um <laughs> and uh and he lives with a pile of my dice all behind him um let's see four <coughs> six something like nine sets hang out behind him right now um and that's going to increase awesome. soon. yeah so uh yeah so anyway i love that 
All right, so let's get to some of the questions that we've already had coming in. Alakazam would like to know, uh, what is your IRL king stat and dump stat? Oh. <laughs> Starting off with the hard questions already. So, noob question, can I get a clarification on the exact definition of both king stat and dump stat? Uh, so king stat it's one would of those be things like, like I just don't know and I'm afraid to ask. So yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and ask. <laughs> so your king stat would be like your best stat. Like what are what would be your okay. highest stat? And your dump stat is your lowest. What's the one that you would put the least amount of points into? <laughs> Ten four. I assume that. I just wanted to be safe. Right yeah. on. Uh, well, since uh, it's my husband, yeah. I guess I can answer it. Go for it. Um, yeah. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> Um, so definitely, I think my highest stat probably would be charisma. I have that big Disney personality. I worked in the parks there, and I just love talking to strangers and getting them interested in whatever I want them to be interested in. Uh, but dexterity would probably be my least. I'm very clumsy. I cannot lift things. I cannot move things I without probably hurting myself. Oof. Yeah, no hurting yeah. yourself. That's a bad idea. <laughs> Not very good. <laughs> Uh, my king stat is probably intelligence if my dump stat is wisdom. So, <laughs> there's things I could do if I knew when to do them and when not to do them. <clears throat> See, I was going to take the exact opposite. I was going to say <laughs> wisdom's probably my king stat because I recognize <laughs> that intelligence is my dump stat. <laughs> <laughs> You, you live a healthier life than I do, then. <laughs> Questionable, but fair. Fair. <laughs> uh, I'm bad at math, so that's got to be intelligence, right? That's got to be a zero. Yeah. Yo, say it. Hell yeah. Represent. Uh, we're out here. <laughs> yeah, bad at math, math people. Oh, yeah. Game. Here we are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Low and yet math. we do math for everything that we do in TP or TTRPGs with our right? dice. I know. I feel like half the game is spent with somebody being like, "Wait, let me let me add this together," and then counting uh, out loud. I've got a I've got a DM for that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my, my players are always doing the math for me. Oh, <laughs> I just have the calculator app open at all times, yeah. and I'm like, I seem <laughs> really fast, but I'm just entering it in as I roll it, like on the spot. There you go. That's the trick. I guess I should answer it. I'm going to have to go with charisma, too, um, because, you know, everything else is just like, mm, hopefully in the middle, but <laughs> unknown. Um, but you know what? I was going to go with strength as my dump stat, but I think I'm going to have to go with dexterity. This is just like my main character that I play all the time, because, like, I fell running, like, at the <laughs> middle beginning of the pandemic and, like, super destroyed my leg just mm. running. Okay. And I didn't wow. know. I mean, like, once you crest 25, people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> Falling used to be funny. Now oh, it's no. a big deal. Now it, yeah. You just I, now you break I things. I couldn't believe it. I was like, this doesn't happen to me. I'm rubber, like, but it turns out. Oh, yeah. We're not. We're not. <laughs> I, I fell like and I had teenagers ask if I was okay, ma'am. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 okay. oh, not now, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was until you spoke. <laughs> Plus ten psychic damage. <laughs> <laughs> I tore you know. my ACL standing up once. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gravity's tough. Yeah, that was harsh, man. And not only yeah, that, I was, uh, I was in my, uh, I was, I had just flown from Boston to Chicago for a work training for three days. And so I literally stood up on the plane in Chicago and blew out my ACL. <laughs> the upside was that because it was a work training, they counted it as a workers' comp case. Amazing. Nice. Wow. Yep. Okay. But it's like okay. you sleep sometimes and Silver you wake lining. up and your neck is broken. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. I would say, it. okay, so to answer the question, I think I'm like a solid 12 across the board. <laughs> hey, that's all pluses. Right, yeah. Uh no, yeah. honestly, I would say that wisdom is probably my highest, but not by a ton. And 
uh, somewhere in the middle, I've got like Dex and Charisma sort of like vying for like a 12. And then, um, okay, we need her. We need her for the party. I would say yeah. like, <laughs> I would say Constitution is also probably somewhere in the middle because I don't get sick a ton. Um, and then Strength yeah, is probably that. my dump stat. <laughs> We're gonna need that. We're like all bad well, wizards. We have no. Time, so we're all gonna be fighting. <laughs> no, for I'm. The back I'm world. good. I'm good. I'm never sick. Okay, I'm fine. Send him. All right. right. Send I'll him. Stand so up. Adam is go. our tank. <laughs> right. Yeah. Adam, can you get that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll, I. I can tank. I can kite. There's. There's. The last time I all hurt right. myself was maybe when I missed one stair step last year, and I felt like I had Thanos snapped. But outside of that. <laughs> I'm pretty I'm falling. good. It's no joke. That fall That's damage no. gets you. That is so. It's yeah. the noise that gets you, though, isn't it? Like when you just oh. like pop your little leg and you're like, uh oh, today's the day. I just laid on the ground for like two minutes and just thought about everything. Just wait. Thought so, like maybe just my wait. HP will just tick up, like a regeneration will kick in. And, uh... Just heavy, slow breathing. Just... I feel like it's that whole like rest, ice, compression, elevate, and as you sit there, your HP bar slowly goes back up. <laughs> like I, I always think about characters in D and D. It's how can you have somebody who's of a certain age adventuring? Like how your grandma feels when I'm like I'm 33, and if I go up the stairs to go to my desk at work, I'm like Rice Krispie treats just being crackled. <laughs> I don't know. Tell me your character is like 88 years old and a human. I'm like, no, no, no. Yeah. I want to run a gritty realism <laughs> campaign where I make you roll decks to get around your chair. And if you fail, you hit your side and you're just done for the day. Oh my god. <laughs> I once played a centaur right. where I had to roll dex checks to go up and down stairs. Oof. So, I mean, kind of like real life. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know for me now they're making everything accessible, so you should have no problem with those dungeons. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's made for wheelchairs, centaurs can just go up and down the slopes. Yep. Absolutely. Freight lift. Freight lift. Yeah. yeah. Just worry about the jam your finger check on a on a cabinet or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Great. Freight lift minutes. Sound like the game for me. <laughs> Apache one two 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 just said roll decks just to get out of bed in the morning. <laughs> Feels like what is that? That's like that old yeah. will save or fortitude save. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely a will save. Totally. It's a will save. <laughs> uh, all right. So we had an ask my question next come in. So we'll dive into that. Uh, Jessalis would like to know for the dungeon masters, what is your idea of a perfect player for you to DM for? Like, is there anything players can do to contribute to a fun time for a session or campaign? Oh boy, my players might be watching. <laughs> <laughs> Now's your chance. Well, Jessalus is one of my players. I have, I have a couple of my players in the chat. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, I can totally answer. Uh, yeah, Jessalus is a great player because she actively participates in almost everything that's going on. But when it's time for another player to shine, they take a step back. And that's that's super, super important because when you get a party of like four or five people and, you know, if, if sometimes you get a group where everyone's on the same page and everyone is super uh, extroverted and they, they take turns and maybe they have like theater background so they kind of know how to share the spotlight. But some people are just naturally quiet and some people are really proactive in like constantly trying to search for things and some people want to wait until everyone else's turn is done. So when you get players that can all have different personalities but understand like wait for the next person give give someone else a chance to shine and if if there's a scene that's going on where it's about them let it be about them and don't try to interject yourself or don't try to like you know does my character overhear that just so you can like enter into the scenario I, I like that um my I, I mean, I'll, I'll take any kind of player because I accept there's lots of different reasons for playing the hobbies, right? But um, my favorite kind is somebody who comes to the table ready to contribute to the story because this, this is the way I play the game that um, I always say in, in the old days, we, we weren't thinking like this and D&D &D was sort of a, uh, an amusement park ride and the DM built a roller coaster and you just went on the ride. 
now I think of it more like a jigsaw puzzle. DM might build the outside borders, but everybody needs to help fill in the pieces. Mm. So I, I leave a lot of my homebrew campaign world open. I don't tell them everything. If they want to come from um, an elven city, but it's in the hills instead of in the forest, Okay, what's the name of that city? Who? What was the government? And I'll, I'll prompt them to uh, add to that. So I like it when they come to the table, not just ready to roll dice and do a lot of combat, but to build a story together. I'll pick you back just with Jason. That. Yeah, I would say we're we're incredibly similar. I think that you and I would actually uh, game well together. But uh, so I'll answer it in a way that I don't know exactly what would be like a perfect player for me. But like when I DM, what would, what's the most enjoyable player for me is a DM. And that's somebody that's like just a whirlwind of ideas. What I mean is even if it cannot be done mechanically, it makes no sense uh, in, in lore or anything like that. Just the fact that you're thinking like, I want to do this. Can I do this? Maybe we could go do that. Like, I can do so much more with that than, like, five faces that are just looking at me like, what should we do? Tell me tell me where to go. Can I, What? I don't know what you want me to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, people that come with a whirlwind of ideas, like, I can work with that and I can play with that. But it's harder for me to kind of light that fire for people if, because like Jason said, like, I don't detail out every single little thing. I leave a lot of open space for the story to breathe so the players can fill that void in. And uh, if they're not filling that void in, then I kind of struggle as a DM personally. As a player, um, one of the things, I use this as an example uh, because it just happened last night in my home game. Um, I, I try to avoid meta knowledge when I can. And I know that like that's really hard for a lot of people and that's okay. But when it's really obvious meta knowledge, like, so what happened in the game was we were in combat. My character took a, a, a we're all level one and I'm a level one wizard. So I'm squishy and, uh, <laughs> and, and I have 10 hit points and I got hit for five. And so the healer in the party basically just goes to the DM. Okay. How many hit points is she down? And I'm like, you don't know that. <laughs> like you have to make a judgment call of whether or not you should heal me or if you should attack the thing that just attacked me. All you can yeah. tell is that I'm injured. There's like, there's literally no way for you to know how many hit points I am down. And what's, what's interesting for me, I'm going to sort of expand on this a little bit is I haven't played my home group just started again a few weeks ago for the first time in two years. And so since I started playing with them is when I got really involved in the TTRPG community, both on Twitter and Twitch and all of that stuff. And so, like, I've learned a ton since then, and I've seen a ton since then, and I've played with so many different types of people since then. And so when I first started playing D&D, he probably would have done something like that, and I wouldn't have thought twice about it. But now that I'm like, no, like the more that I have learned and the more that I've played, the more I'm like, no, you wouldn't know that information. There's, you shouldn't know that information. You're a player. <laughs> so I think, um, as a player, when fellow players, like I like to see other people take initiative to do what they think is right by their character and by their part, by the rest of their party, like play your character the way you think it should be done. Like, this is where that expression, it's what my character would do, actually is helpful. Like, don't be the asshole because that's what your character would do. But, like, if your character would attack somebody in combat because you think that's what they would do, then do it. Don't just be like, well, I need to know what to do next. <laughs> anyway, right. that's the whole story behind it. <laughs> That's a good yeah. point. Yep. As a player, I think uh, you guys all sound like really fun DMs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that's exactly what I prefer in a DM, right? Like, because I'm constantly like, okay, hold on a minute. This has four parts, but I've just concocted it. It's what I want to do. It's extremely weird. This is why <laughs> I primarily play homebrew when I get to choose. My home 
game is a show. Uh, and we've been making our show for like, uh, since like 2017 or 18 now. Um, and like, at this point we gel so hard that it's, it's like outside of the typical experience. Uh, but when I play with other people, it's like, if there's no room for me to idea craft, then like, I'll do my bit, but I'm not going to hang that long. <laughs> Because mm. that's the good stuff for me. Like, we're an improv team, so, like, our stuff is already completely insane anyway. Um, but, like, ah, it's about that, that, like, collaborative storytelling, I think. Like, that's the, the golden nugget there. Yeah, I think that that's definitely, like, a two-way channel. I play in a lot of games um, with the DM, and I like when creative solutions are rewarded. And I like being the person that tries to bring those to the table or encourage other people to come up with those kinds of solutions. And I think it is a very collaborative process because if we're just sitting there listening to the DM talking the whole time, it's going to be a lot harder to get invested in it. And I think that the onus is on the players to be as invested in the game as they want to be able to get something out of it. If I'm not enjoying a game, most of the reason is probably because I'm not putting in something, I'm not communicating a backstory, I'm not communicating a connection, um, asking questions, interacting with people as much um, as a player. So I think that that definitely kind of goes both ways in that. Agreed. Sure. Um, anybody else have any other thoughts? I think uh, one thing Jason said earlier is that like old D and D kind of operated differently. Like I've I've been playing since uh, AD and D, and it's definitely like as a retrospective, it is kind of neat how like this it's it's definitely become more sandbox over time. And like I remember doing those original adventures, and it was very much like almost like a movie where like you were there for a very specific story, and it might turn out a little differently each time, but like. This is what you, you were in that dungeon to, you know, kill Strahd, or you were. It was, it was, it was linear. You know, you, even even yeah. the mistakes you made were kind of uh, super contained. Like you could only you can only do so many bad things to yourself, really. Right. There's only one or two ways White Plume Mountain can end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Let me I think it's fun hearing right. about times like that. I didn't get into anything TTRPG, like literally nothing TTRPG until January of 2020. So as much research and like diving into things as I've done like since then, so I know kind of like peripherally some of the history of TTRPGs, um, like I didn't experience any of that myself. And when I actually got into it, obviously it's in this kind of current mindset in the uh, TTRPG community, so... It's always interesting to me when people talk about their experiences from even like 10, 15 years ago, let alone 20, 30, 40 years ago. Right. I'd, I'd also like it, something that kind of rings in my head with this conversation is uh, for, for people who are looking to play for the first time, it's kind of reflexive to like go online and like see what to do and what not to do. But that could be a really crappy thing to do in this hobby because you get a lot of uh, there's there's obviously stories about bad experiences. But you also get certain types of players that are like min maxers and you'll get stories about how like you shouldn't play this variation of paladin because it's inferior damage wise when you could be doing something else and it makes you feel like bad about maybe playing the archetype that you want to when there's really no wrong choice or or bad choice like there may be numerically some worse things about your class but a dm can hopefully fix that for you as the game progresses right I do agree. I came in looking at Reddit or Reddit subreddits or whatever for D and D behind the screen, a bunch of those. So like, if I didn't have my life motto is I D G A F. So even if somebody tells me not to do something I want to do, I'm gonna probably do it anyway. So, but yeah, agreed. If you don't have that mindset, if you're real kind of like like timid, or if somebody's gonna easily influence you to feel a certain way about getting into a game, then you should probably avoid a lot of online places like reddit and subreddits for getting into D D. 100 percent yeah it definitely speaks to how it's different games and different people playing the games are going to have different experiences so just because you have a bad experience with one dm or one game or one player it's not going to be a universal thing i just seeing in the community of what we have 
there's so many different styles, so many different backgrounds, so many different things. Um, and one thing that I really respect in the process is a session zero mm-hmm. or having some kind of session or chat beforehand where people can kind of introduce what kind of a character they want to play, where they can understand a little bit about the world, a little bit about the game style. Um, my DM likes to really explain, you know, what he allows, like that he wants us to be able to be collaborative, to be able to be communicative and everything, and really just solidifying that we're all kind of working together to make this story happen. And I think setting those expectations up really early on, um, keep building that camaraderie with like all the different players really makes it so you can be what you want to be. I remember playing uh, third edition going into 3.5 uh, back when I was around 14 years old or so. Um, I was playing with my parents and their friends because I didn't want to play with the younger kids. Um, at the time and it was a very different kind of experience you know being a kid playing with adults not really knowing what I was doing um you know following along with the modules and just kind of going through the paces of it versus having that kind of creativity now in more of a sandbox world and with people who feel so open and like they can express themselves through their characters or certain aspects of their personality and I do think in that way TTRPGs are for everybody who wants them to be for them. Uh, it's just about finding that balance and finding the right people in the right community. I say that all the time. <laughs> yep. There's definitely some DMs out there that I would not be the player that you want. And <laughs> there's definitely somewhere I would be. It just depends. That is the truth. <laughs> yep. Yeah. As far as looking for I'm hoping for players for with creativity and role playing. Um, I'm I'm just about to start a new campaign tomorrow night, and um, we're going to we're going to expand on the current inspiration, which is like the forgotten uh, metric of five E. Mm. But uh, we're going to borrow. This is I should say this is uh, an idea from one of my players. Thank you, Wolf, if he's out there tonight. But. Um, we're going to borrow a mechanic from the Cypher system, which is uh, using various inspiration points. So you can, a- as you do more creative things and think outside the box, or make a decision purely based on role playing or contribute to the story, you the DM awards one of these points. And what you can do with the points, besides just using them to re-roll a bad 20 roll, you can actually use them to contribute to a story. You can do uh, yes and. So you're looking for something, you can't find it. And uh, I just remembered that uh, my friend gave me a map to this room and you can actually spend the inspiration points to um, add to the story. It only works if you have players that are willing to, you know, not abuse that metric. But uh, but I think, we'll see, I'll let you guys know how it works out, but I think (laughs) it'll, Basically, it's based on the idea, the whole concept is based on something that Matt Colville recently talked about, which is we should be rewarding what we want to happen more often, right? So if all you ever reward is beating up monsters, your players are just going to want to beat up monsters, right? But if you you can find a way to reward them for clever role-playing and thinking outside the box, then then that's what's going to happen. It's probably, uh, it's almost as important with uh, new players. Probably more important with new players. Positive reinforcement. Yeah, I was just going to say, now we can get into the psychology of positive reinforcement. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) But that's exactly what it is. You're you're right. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, All right, let's see. So um, we got a question from the Ink Den. And they would like to know, to everyone, what is your go-to personal TTRPG story when you need a laugh? Oh. Oh, boy. I don't know if I have a go-to. Flip on a banana, maybe? (laughs) (laughs) I know one... This was something that I did, and every every so often when I think of it, it makes me kind of giggle. Um, it was in the the Bengamins uh, stream. <laughs> Taylor was involved in that. It was a it was a charity fundraiser, and 
it was basically we were we were bowling teams. Um, it was a mm. TTRPG bowling stream, and uh, and so I was on a team with David and Andy Tilstra. Now that alone is enough to be hilarious, <laughs> but. Uh, we played pizza people and not like pizza delivery people, but like pizza, the hut type people. And, um, <laughs> and so one thing we were going through and, and we were mobsters at that. Like we came from a mobster family and, uh, and one at one point during the episode, um, my character charity, cause it was a charity stream. So that's why she was there. Um, she pulls out, you know, like she took her turn bowling and then she finishes and she whips around and she pulls out her lipstick, which happens to be marinara red and puts it on. <laughs> and like, for some reason, first of all, I am not a bright red lipstick person in the first place, but for some reason, like just picturing this giant mound of like pizza, putting on marinara red lipstick is very funny to me. And so there you go. That's that's one of mine. <laughs> that's that. De- that was Thanks. that was definitely a high point of the stream for me. Um, Bangamins. Bangamins was so is fun. Probably, that's probably one of mine too. That Bangamins is like a Chuck E. Cheese ripoff created by uh, Seth, who's the DM from Cheaper by the Dungeon, who was guest DMing on our show, uh, and so. There are like two or three episodes of our show where we like rip through this Chuck E. Cheese and then we decided to have like a, a charity stream where everybody had to come to the, the Bangamins and like bowl and it was absolutely insane and out of control and um, it's pretty, it's our show's comedy so like every episode is, <laughs> is like one of those for me but I mean my top stories are probably the one where we have to go through space customs because all of us are immigrants somewhere uh and so we all have personal experiences with passport control and customs that are maybe a little traumatic and so we turned it into a game uh and the one where we turned uh an eating contest into a combat episode because we do like very little combat we're constantly like doing other stuff and so we decided to get all of our combat out for like an entire three-year period in this giant eating episode where like we were rolling damage against the food and like um yeah that's kind of the vibe um for me (laughs) but bangaman's definitely up there the probably the last time i think i was a player in like a long-term campaign my friends and I were going through, it was, it was a work group, so we met up like once a week after work and did some, some D&D. Uh, and we had been playing for a few months when uh, a new hire wanted to join the campaign. So uh, we were in, like, deep into a storyline, like inside of a crypt, doing stuff that you do in a crypt, stealing things, whatever. And he makes this super lawful paladin character who none of our characters know, but we agree, like, this is the intro session for the character, right? So you're going to come in, you're going to introduce yourself, we're going to react appropriately in character, right? Um, and he chooses to, we're like in this one, there's, there's only one way into this room. And he shows up, and we had just gotten out of this big battle, and his character, like, weapons in hand says, I am your judgment! And... <laughs> We all just locked the door and barricaded it so he couldn't come in because we're like, we don't want to fight anyone else and we don't know that you're a good guy yet. Why would you say this? And he's like, no, that's what I'm committing to. So we we spent about a good 30 minutes like keeping his character away from our character while we explained like, that's not maybe the right interaction to make a friend, right? Like, maybe don't threaten us immediately. (laughs) What do you mean? It works all the time. That's how I made all my friends. (laughs) that's how i got you all here (laughs) yeah intimidation checks Uh, no uh so my favorite funny story that i have is my absolute favorite character i play for like all of my one shots just because i enjoy playing her so much Uh, so i had a changeling with a pirate background 
Um, she's a cleric of Mask, so she likes to hunt treasure. We have a very small group, but she interacts a lot with our Gloomstalker, who is the straight man. Uh, his name is Dorian, and then she's Oria. And they end up inside of a crypt, and it's dark. They're fighting Dorgar, so it's very hard to see them in any kind of darkness to begin with. And Gloomstalker Rangers have this feature where if they're in darkness, they are also invisible. Well, they assumed because she takes the visage of a sun elf that she would have dark vision and have no problem kind of succeeding or at least making attempts to fight something in this atmosphere. And when we were about to go down, um, he actually spoke up to the other players. And he's like, oh, okay, like, Dampier elf, this is fine. We can all see in the dark. And had her be like, no, I cannot see in the dark. He's like, I just thought she was kidding because she kids about everything. So we get down there, we're fighting the Durgar, and I cast a Radiant Blade so I can actually see, as well as attack, which of course ruins the Gloomstalker's entire plan. And he was like, what are you doing? It's like, now they can see me. And she's like, I cannot see in the dark. So afterwards, they were talking about it. They're like, why can't you see in the dark? Um, so the reason was, I am a sun elf, so we don't go in the dark. <laughs> uh, and I really actually had them going with that for like a few more sessions <laughs> uh, but really just dug down into that like sun elf so fun that's my thing light not darkness uh, <laughs> but it was just a very funny moment because it just completely ruined absolutely every single one of uh, Dorian's plans that's fantastic <laughs> awesome I've been a, a PC in two campaigns, so those are the only two campaigns I've ever been a PC, both online, same DM on both, uh, James McCloy, and uh, similar groups on both, just a couple people interchanged. But on this most recent uh, campaign we were playing through, uh, so we had a paladin who was like a really just straight edge, by the book, uh, holier than thou kind of righteous paladin, right? And then we had a, a, a warrior that was really loose and reckless, and but like about the team. And uh, so long story short, me and another character were kind of like in the peripherals of this fight against this white dragon, right? And we were walking through the woods and we stumbled across it. The holier-than-thou paladin and exits the tree line, like showing his sword and shield, like, have at ye, basically. And uh, so we start fighting this uh, white dragon. And uh, so I tried to communicate this plan until I realized I only communicated like half the plan and then I wild shaped into a spider and as a spider I could not audibly finish communicating my plan to my team. <laughs> so I went into this cave I was trying to lure this dragon into and that put me out for the rest of the fight. Long story short, I literally just stu or hung from the ceiling in this cave waiting for my opportunity to strike as a giant spider, which never happened. But so the funniest thing that that did happen. So the the warrior who's uh, Carlos C A Belize Belize on uh, Twitter, but uh, him and Nate uh, Niels uh, Weber I think on Twitter. But uh, so they're fighting this white dragon. They go up on top of the cave uh, entrance, and the white dragon goes down onto the ground at cave level, if you will. And so Carlos, who's this big warrior, he goes flying like cinematic style off the uh, top of the cave, has his sword out, about to jump down on this dragon and start meleeing it, right? And so he goes through his turn and I'm just listening to all this go down. So I'm like playing it like a movie in my head. And it was super badass when Carlos jumped off the top. And so it's, Nate, it's uh, Niels' turn now. And I'm like, F yeah, he's about to jump off the cave too, and then they're gonna double team this dragon. And <laughs> they said that instead of jumping off, just the way he delivered it, it's not gonna be as funny without knowing the people involved. But he definitely took the time to just walk down the side of the cave instead of leaping off at the dragon, just left Carlos to kind of fight for a round by himself. But just from my vantage point sitting back, it was epically hilarious because I fully expected Nate to just do a uh, flying thing. He had a flame sword powered by this god, Arcan. Like, it was perfect moment for him to just destroy this dragon, and he definitely just ran down the side of the hill instead. That's my favorite funny story. <laughs> I'm gonna... Probably uh, didn't want his joints to hurt. 
<laughs> I'm gonna just take a quick time out. I want to shout out. I want to shout out someone in chat. Orc from Mork just gifted five subs to my community. So thank you so much to Orc. Um, that's super super sweet of you. And uh, I'm excited to see all the people that that got them. Uh, most of them are regular viewers, and that makes me very happy. So uh, thank you so much, Orc. I appreciate you. Um, yeah. That's All super right. cool. Right on. Yeah. Awesome. 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 I have the best. I have the best people here. I'm telling you. Uh, all right. Let's see. Um, I'm going to jump to our next question. Um, the next question is from the Dimpire, Jim the Dim. Hi, Jim. Uh, Jim would like to know, if you were a dragon, what would your horde be? But... You can't say dice. Yes. Oh boy. <laughs> I have a horde that I don't do anything with. I have a horde of cardstock. I just like fancy paper, but then I cannot commit to doing anything with it. It's like I don't have the emotional energy to put a sticker on anything because that's too permanent and I can't handle it. Yeah. Um, but I had a cardstock closet in our... Uh, a big wardrobe full of it in our last apartment that is now in a much larger closet so I can keep contributing to it. Um, so definitely fancy paper and stationery would be in my hoard if I was a dragon. And I am already a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so <laughs> maybe I'm... Is there a music dragon? Because my, my <laughs> horde would actually be harmonicas. Uh, all my friends would, wow. would say that I've already that I've already done this. <laughs> <'Cause> I, <laughs> when I'm when I'm not playing, uh, I'm a harmonica player. But um, harmonica is a diatonic instrument. Each is only one key, so you have to start out with twelve, and then there's minor keys, and then you could do certain adjust, blah 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 blah. And pretty soon, I've probably got fifty harmonicas. So, <clears throat> yeah. If you get awesome. a really nice cool. windy cave, you can get a cool sound going through, right? <laughs> ah, wind Oh, dragon. that'd be nice and eerie. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there we go. You just flap your wings all the time to make music. <laughs> that'd be really cool. Yeah. It probably has, like, the Yankee Candle effect, though, where, like, one <laughs> harmonica is nice, but, like, a thousand harmonicas, <laughs> you just want to die. Just, 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 just like, in dungeon. <laughs> I'm not even sure everybody would say one harmonica is nice. It depends on who you ask. <laughs> depends on who's playing it, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't if know what they're like getting me into. As a five year old? Nope. No. Not even remotely pleasant. <laughs> cookies. Uh, like a, okay. like a, a thousand cookies. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No. But wait a minute, though. Like, is a, a horde of a thousand cookies really a horde of cookies, though? You need, I like, a hundred thousand cookies? You know what I'm saying? That's you gotta one really pile. Numbers. Okay, He's there you go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's, yeah, it's a young dragon. It's okay. Dragon. No, yeah. I'm, I'm just dragon. trying to expand his uh, his his uh, goals right there, you know? Get you more than a thousand cookies, bro. I'm gonna, Get you, like, three thousand well, cookies. I'm going to start with cookie cakes, so you're going to hear okay. a thousand cookies, but okay. if it's a dragon okay. horde, proportional, right? Like, it's got to be the right size. Ooh. Well, okay. it's so small because okay. he's getting the cookies from grandmothers. It's like, as soon as they come out and they're on the cooling rack, it's got to be, like, sentimental value to these cookies <laughs> for it to okay. be worthy. Like, like a cookie <laughs> racket? Like, they, they the immediately done baking and I'm knocking at the door, I'm like... Come on, Granny. <laughs> okay. I like that. <laughs> I like to talk to cookies. I'm going to take it downhill and somebody's got a course corrected afterwards. I can't show it, but anybody who knows me, no surprise come in. My horde would be a uh, bud for sure, weed, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> That's definitely, if I was a dragon, that means I can do whatever I want to do. And I'm sitting on a, a mountain for sure, like. It is what it is. <laughs> I feel like that's on brand for a dragon, too, you know? like. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got a built-in lighter. I don't need to ask, hey, who's got my lighter? Nobody's you stealing know, nothing from me. You. I'm a dragon. <laughs> that's a great idea. I feel right? like we could, we could live in the same community uh, for many okay. reasons. Last summer, I got addicted to plants. I know what you're thinking, but literally, like, just all of them, I tried to, like... 
in my apartment really like turn up with the greenery and let me tell you apartment gardening is rough um <laughs> and i i overestimated like how it would go so i planted like 150 tomatoes i know it was a mistake i planted a, a squash in my house it grew way faster than i thought it would and it climbed everything and it grew these little fingers and it would go through fabric what a disaster and there were like a lot of other things i bought a tiny eucalyptus at this store and you know it was imported obviously i live in iceland so it's not from around here and like it started to die we tried everything we couldn't figure it out and so we ended up throwing it away and when we like dumped it out there were some unbelievable millipedes in there and my uh husband was just like bye this is your yeah, mess. No. Uh-uh. <laughs> so like really i think as a dragon i would probably like maybe not do that again but like <laughs> just try you know with a better space um and i would probably continue my current hordes which are found plastic animals if i find a plastic animal outside i'm taking oh. it um sorry to everybody's kid that dropped that plastic animal and might have still been around and saw what I did. Um, <laughs> How many do you have? Like a lot. <laughs> and some of them I spray paint gold and put places and they look extremely fancy and I wear some of them. That's awesome. Um, you know, and memes. I hoard memes like a sick person. My phone has 51,000. It's I'm working on it. I used to hoard tabs on my computer. I'm getting better. It's 2022. <laughs> year new me. Um, and I hoard ugly rocks. Uh, not what you'd think. I'm not hoarding cute ones, not crystals, whatever. I'm hoarding <laughs> the ugly ones. Um, like jagged street rocks. And like, I'm a collector of lava. Glass jar, that stuff. It's, it's prickly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm hoarding all that stuff you don't want that you dropped that you're not sure you had. Uh, it's at my house. Sorry. <laughs> well, at least now I know where like all my that. missing stuff is. It's all at Tay's house. I got it. <laughs> if you Do you have the it, socks from our dryers too? <laughs> I am the portal. If you have lost one thing, I have it. I'm the bag of holding. I've got it. Whatever you're looking for. If it was like a your favorite hair noodle. Or whatever they're called. I got it. Um, you know. I, got I just it. love this answer because before my answer, I'm thinking like, man, how, are we gonna, how am I going to redeem myself from here? Well, we got somebody admitting to stealing toys from kids. Like, that has to be worse <laughs> in my hoard for sure. So yeah. When you said yes. you were going to need help getting back on the rails, I was like, it's not me that's going to do that, but I'm, got, I'm coming up. But I got your back. Perfect. You got my I back see, right on. I want to to see the dungeon that is just filled with browser tabs. Like, what a nightmare that would you be. Don't like, just that. You don't just pop-ups. That. Adam, don't don't call its name. Names have power. Magic. The second we're I go all... into cyberpunk, I know exactly what I'm doing. We're all old enough still to remember, like, the billions of actual windows that would start populating yeah. the screen. Yeah. And, but... like, that music Ooh, was, that's coming from that somewhere. Too. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that they had to put the like music icon on the tab for me. So. <laughs> Thanks. Well, at least that was nice of them to do it. Yeah. 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 It's not helping me, but you know, I'm, I'm like, oh crap, she's back. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I hoard dragons. Um. <laughs> As, okay. Okay. Meta. Right? I, I know. Yeah, well. But I do. I collect dragon stuff. Like, I mean, that one dragon that I showed you is like one of like a massive collection that's, you know, both on the other side of my room and downstairs. All my plush dragons are up here in my bedroom and all of my like other dragon stuff, minis and various figurines and whatever are all downstairs. Um, one of my friends even found me... Uh, this dragon that goes on top of the release valve for my instant pot. So when you release awesome. the valve, it's got steam that comes out of its mouth. <laughs> it's the coolest awesome. thing ever. Oh, okay. So for you, That's it's awesome. more like dungeons for dragons. Yeah. 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 Can you uh, yeah. drop the link to that sometime, please? Uh, I'll have to right? find it. Yeah, yeah. I was like, That's the coolest I use my thing. instant pot a lot. <laughs> 
Um, so that, yeah, I hoard dragons. Oh, and then I also got, speaking of, speaking of dragons, I got this very awesome, um, dice tray from, uh, from one of my good friends and moderators, Wolf's Blood. Um, so it's got that on the outside and then, uh, on the inside, hold on, let me open it. Um, hopefully you can see that. Oh. Yeah, there we go. Nope. But, uh, yeah, it says roll the dice on the Super inside, cool. so... Um, so yeah, so I have like various <laughs> dice stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. So all that good stuff. And then, uh, yarn because I'm a knitter. So I also hoard yarn. I literally have a chest full of it immediately next to me. Uh, yeah, it's, it's bad. At least you're a useful dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just right. over here hoarding crap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know one so much dragon's I trash. What's that? I, I technically didn't answer, I guess, what I actually hoard. I was going more like what I would hoard. So if you went out in my garage, we're just going to go with cardboard. I'm the dragon of cardboard hoarding in there reality. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're I a dragon, probably, probably not because you could sneeze and have it catch on fire. It would all go up pretty quickly. <laughs> so would mine, though, for that matter. Very we true. really do need to move in, like, to the same dragon complex because I also hoard cardboard. Like, this is real. We're... Cardboard and styrofoam, I found yes. out in my, like, two, three years of crafting and making and stuff. Like, you can literally... Ex and then Elmer's glue. So yeah. anybody watching this, if you're like, I want to get into crafting, but everywhere it says use, like, PVA glue, like, WTF is PVA glue... It's just Elmer's glue, like school glue. Like, that's literally all it is. I didn't know that for, like, months because I'm ignorant. But I found that out, and then I Sorry. fell in love with making stuff. So, yeah, you can make anything with cardboard and styrofoam. <laughs> oh, my God. That's the truth. Like, I have a... I My, like, little zone here is in our attic, and the rest of the attic is foam. <laughs> like different kinds of foam because I used to be really into making props when I could like go places to show them to people and now that I've been trapped in my cage for two years <laughs> I kind of like I took a break right. but like the foam and foam is expensive like, it is expensive know about this? what a yep. freaking yeah. oak too because it's like mostly air so right. you right. know and the money that I've spent on foam because you gotta get that good foam talking about you got to get that international phone like this phone, <laughs> use light and um i've definitely spent more than i've told like my family or <laughs> <laughs> how much was that phone don't worry about it i know I just, a couple I just people <laughs> uh you'd get along with tay because they go around the construction sites in the area and they scoop up all the uh, extra foam that's that not being used pink foam. Mm -hmm. yeah I, yeah see, that's like one of my favorite hobbies is like going places and just like treasure picking it's not trash <laughs> picking okay it's treasure picking yeah <laughs> one man's trash uh-huh is, is tay's treasure, is tay's treasure. Is tay's treasure. someone else's house is a Every place <laughs> yeah. this is already a dragon lair i mean like i'm not taking my tinsel down forget it this is it <laughs> i still have christmas lights up that's the other I thing I would hoard is Christmas down. lights. No. My tree's still up. I'm right. with you. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Our tree like... stays up till my birthday is over, and then my husband has to move it. Same. And that's when's your birthday? Do. February 10th, so uh -huh. I think that's pretty reasonable. Yeah, that's it's not okay, too yeah. bad. It's, okay. it's, it's not good. too bad. If if anything, not too bad. Early, because if... it's still dark in February, so. Yeah. I'm in Florida. It just got cold this week. Yeah. And by cold, nope. I mean like sixty. That's what I was so like, like, like that. sixty. <laughs> yeah, right. really. <laughs> I just changed the color of the tree, and now it's fine. It's a Valentine's tree now. Get That's it? I know a lot of people that do right? that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can buy lights that have an app. Beep beep beep. Yeah. Now it's a Halloween tree. Watch out. Nobody's coming to my house anyway. Who's gonna see it? <laughs> they better not. They do not need to be up in here seeing how many plastic animals I've stolen from local kids. Adventurers Just... better not be raiding your horde. They won't find anything. <laughs> <laughs> hey, depends on what age you are. Kids would love it. A good yeah, that's true. Let's go. The party five that children? defeats you. It's all parents who had to take to adventuring because if their kid doesn't get their 
boy, they will not go to sleep. <laughs> Parents are like bringing tribute to leave outside my house. Please take this garbage. We have been trying to get rid of it. The kids asleep. Just stay in. Tay wakes up in the morning. There's like a pile of retainers and. <laughs> Hey, if it's one of those cool colored ones with a picture scanned onto it, let me have it. <laughs> I'll do something with it. Fair. Those are expensive. I could probably trade that on the black market for more garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody out there who's ever had to buy their kid braces is like, amen. Amen. <laughs> that the one piece of plastic that cost me a mortgage and a half. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> the dragon black market. Oh, my God. Um, all right, we are going to pause here for a break. And uh, if we haven't gotten to your question yet, we have it. We will get to it as soon as we come back. So uh, this will be a chance for everyone to get up, stretch their legs, hashtag free the pee. And we will be back in just a few minutes. Uh, so stick around and, uh, and we will get back to your questions when we're done. In a world where heroes stand tall. What the heck is that supposed to mean? Oh. <clears throat> uh, sorry. Play as adorable hamsters in Disaster Hamsters 2, an epic TTRPG book designed for 5th edition. It's more fun than you can stuff your cheeks with! The book has three parts. Everything you'll need to play as a hamster in 5th edition. Ta-da! A whole sanctuary full of adorable sentient animals for your hamsters to explore. Ta-da! Hold up! Adventure? I'm so confused! How am I even talking right now? I have so many questions! The nefarious scientist Jerry Hilliot has perfected the process of creating sentient hamsters. Now, for a final test, he's dropped his experiments into the sanctuary to see how they fare. Not only must they survive, but they must also defeat the tyrannical kitty Snuggles to escape to freedom. This is awesome! We need your support for Disaster Hamsters 2 to happen. We'd love to have you on the team. All right, we are back from our break. Uh, I have a kitty with me on my desk now. She was just enjoying some treats. And um, yeah, now my other cat is like, I want more treats. and they're spoiled so you know it is what it is um but anyway we are back from break i hope you all enjoyed the disaster hamsters promo video if you stuck around during the break and you saw that that is currently going on kickstarter right now uh put together by a lot of good friends of the tavern who have all been here before uh, or most of them have been here before so definitely worth checking out if you are not familiar with disaster hamsters you definitely should give it a look. It is 5e based and you get to play as sentient hamsters and otters. And I think there's like, I don't know, hedgehogs in there and there might be a ferret. Yeah. Anyway, it looks super cute. Um, so, yeah. So You give say it that as if all, all hamsters are not sentient. What are you saying, <laughs> Luna? Uh, I didn't say that. It's it, not all hamsters. <laughs> it's can't turn a lie, Luna. <laughs> um, and then and then it was honestly all I could do uh, during the break to not grab a cookie from downstairs because <laughs> I was like, now we've been talking about cookies and I really want a cookie because I just got cookies from Critical Hit Cookies this week. I don't and... know why I'm excited. I'm not going to get one. <laughs> I'm going to check his board. <laughs> I'm over here like, it's our turn. The cats have had theirs. Right? Now, uh, I know. I know. Um, nope. I'm trying to save. I have, I have three ginger cookies left and I'm trying to save them until... I go back to work on Tuesday, but that's not going to happen. I guarantee it. So, um, yeah. I understand. 
All right, let's uh, let's dive back into some of our questions. So the next one that we have comes from Alakazam. And uh, the question is, who are some creators, writers, artists, etc., that inspire you and your work? It's a tough question. <laughs> I wouldn't be probably even on here right now if it wasn't for Michael Mordor, the Goblin King, uh, Gorilla with the Brush, Alan, the Father of Dragons, Tharaval. Uh, I mean, I could go on and on. There are so many miniature painters. Uh, Muses Touch, Carol, uh, Miss MLG from Mighty Lancer Games, uh, Keith and Jess that we mentioned from UO Publishing. Uh, literally, like, I got into D&D because &D I was like, this is fun. My aunt thought I'd be a decent DM. And then I got on Twitter because I made these like rough little replays with unpainted minis and some uh, pirated uh, basically images that I just printed oversized with a grid on it. And that's what I was using with my unpainted minis. And uh, I started trying to publish out this YouTube channel that I came up with. That's why I got on Twitter. And then so the people that I mentioned, the first one being the Goblin King, Michael Michael Mordor, I got on his Patreon, got in his Discord. That whole community took me in. And if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here talking to you guys right now, like at all. So all of my credit will always go uh, to the top first, Michael Mordor. Nice, nice. Yeah. Um, if I, let's see creator that inspires my RPG the most is actually Mike Shea on Sly Flourish. There was a time, uh, well, all last year, I ran six uh, homebrew games a week. And there's no way I could have done that without uh, Sly Flourish's lazy Dungeon Master method. So, um, there's, there's a lot of people out there, but um, yeah. If, if I was writing old school the way I did before I started reading his books and watching his videos. I would have never been able to do that. Um, I have like two people specifically that comes to mind. Um, so as far as inspiration goes, definitely Alakazam, my husband. Um, he really got interested in wanting to play D&D a few years ago. I hadn't played since I was, you know, like a young teenager. And getting back into playing Dungeons and Dragons is what made me get back into wanting to draw. I took kind of a decade long break from actually drawing or doodling anything. Um, and once I had a character that I was really in love with and a story that was really engrossing for me, I wanted to start trying to draw them again and be like, oh, okay, these are, this is what happens. This is my character. This is what they look like. Um, and it really started it off. And then C. Uh, Leopard Art on Twitter, our friend Chris, uh, was actually you know, his best friend from childhood. He's an amazing artist, um, graduated from a really great art school, and is just the most positive, friendly, helpful guy. Um, he has taught me so much, given me so much feedback, really encouraged me with my, my art to work on it and do more. And I probably would never even put color on things, let alone do line art for them, <laughs> if it wasn't for him, like, nudging me subtly and less subtly. Um, over the last couple of years, but uh, really, honestly, I've only been drawing again for the last about three years now. Um, so Alakazam got me into wanting to do it because he got me into wanting to play D&D &D and TTRPGs and, you know, having characters in mind. And then uh, C. Leverett Art for really helping me create what my style would be, essentially, um, and motivating me to do more and also letting me know that I've made progress and that I've can be happy with what I draw. Right now, my inspiration is not my cats. <laughs> <laughs> For anybody inspiration, who, frustration, some similar words. Right, you know, anybody <laughs> listening to the podcast version of this, my cat, one of my cats has just gotten up and walked in front of my face like three times in a row because she's looking for, for more treats. So, yeah. <laughs> we did this. Oh, she's back. Here she is again. This is Daisy, who <laughs> never comes up here during stream unless she's looking for treats. <laughs> I mean, I feel it. When there's a snack, you gotta attack, you know what I mean? Right? But... You can't have just one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like potato chips. Who has one potato chip? <laughs> Who's doing that? Yeah. Are you out right. there? 
I'd love to know. I know somebody who does. Well, please, <laughs> please inquire further because I need to know more about that. Uh, I wish I had the discipline. That's wild. Can you even taste one? Like when you get like, do you even they know? They have like a crazy diet that they're like super strict that they do and everything. And then occasionally if there's like chips in the office, they'll take one and they'll be like, okay, that was great. That was good. What? And then walk back to their desk. And I just, hopefully one day I will pass by and like see it, the door cracked open. I just want to see her shoveling food in her mouth. <laughs> You know that's what I do. Silly, <laughs> what I'm at work. Silly, like, I've got a couple different magical powers. That's not one of them. Um, <laughs> Willpower? Yeah, I've got, you know, like, a few. I'm not supposed to talk about them. I'm in witness protection. But um, That's the real reason she's in Iceland, actually. <laughs> Nobody will She's go. in witness protection because she keeps stealing kids' toys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that. And that's it. That's it, Luna. That's all I've that's all Let's I've play the yeah. intro to Taken. <laughs> <That's> it. <laughs> and now they know. Now they know. Great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what a giveaway. <clears throat> Dang it. <laughs> well, Taylor, it's been Dang. nice knowing you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm being like Summit. No. <laughs> by, by the FBI. <laughs> Dang. Inspiration, though. Like, um, that's such a loaded question because, I mean, like, it depends on what it, we're talking about because I do a lot of different things. Like, this is one... Uh, facet of my work but like I'm also a graphic illustrator um, and like a cellist and like you know like there's you know people are multifaceted right like we've all got 50 different lives uh, right right um, yeah. yeah different personality for different friend group yeah yeah, yeah absolutely you know, some of, some of you us, never know who's the real you some of us don't know how to stop so we got to do 59 things but um, as far as like this world, yeah, it's, it's, it's not great. I don't recommend it, but, I feel um, <laughs> I have to completely like, if we are thinking about who like really got us into it, um, like there's probably an endless list of like just authors that I have to give credit to that I'm blanking on really hard right now, because as a child, I mean, that's kind of how you fall into these things, right? Like just whatever vein of role playing that you have come to there's probably an author wrapped up in there that like gave you some kind of mental vision of like who you'd be or like what you would do in a in in this like world scenario um but i have to give for this like vein of my life i have to give all the credit to uh my bff dan who is my co-player on my podcast backwater bastards um He's like my best friend, and I didn't know about this world, really. Um, and he asked me to do this one day, and I was just like, I don't know what he's talking about at all, but I definitely 100% jumped in because, you know, he's he's a high-quality animal. Um, and, like, I definitely bounce, like, everything off of him because he's, he's a concept artist, so it's like if I draw something, if I'm working on something... If I'm like trying to do something better, if I'm trying to like produce better, or if I'm trying to project manage better, or I'm trying to like do a joke better, everything bounces off of him. And our th the third member of our party, um, DM Dick Dynamite, uh, is probably like I know. Take it in. It's, it is exactly what you imagine. Um, it's is out of control um but like nice. dick is probably i guess i would have to say that like dick is my was my first like like real long-term dm um and so he kind of shaped my experience in in that way because like your first dm right like that or your first experience with a dm like you kind of if you play with them for a while like that's sort of how you learn the world and your first experience and every dm that you meet after that that's another like life mm -hmm. um even if it's a one shot sometimes <clears throat> like you are putting yourself in that person's brain and it's such a like it's such a thing right because like that's their world and you know you're in it now and you're kind of building this thing and it's like it's such a dang ride and we've been playing regularly for <clears throat> like four years now or whatever and like whoa it's changed my whole life i mean like we've emotionally developed into these like different people now and uh you know cry in front of each other on a regular basis now because we're going through like a really strange arc 
in our comedy show what's going on. But, like, yeah, I have to give it up. Anybody I've ever worked with, even if it was, like, a 30-minute one-shot on a charity stream, like, anybody with the guts to put their stuff out there, like, that's huge. And I'm inspired by you every day. <laughs> I love you, man. I love you guys. <laughs> it's scary as hell sometimes. But, yeah. I feel super bad because I don't have one person that, like, <clears throat> mega... Like, I, there's there's no go-to for me. Like, I, I feel like I soak in a lot of stuff from everyone. And I, I don't have just, like, a foot in the tabletop community. Like, the tabletop community has been super great to me. And I want to be more active and I want to do more. But <clears throat> I got into all of this from writing stories for my friend group. And then, you know, I just clicked on youtube and found like black magic crafts and thought hey i can maybe do terrain for myself and then you know i started doing web comp stuff and met that whole group of people so like i kind of also have my foot in a million different spaces um but the one thing that i think really set me on this journey is uh like de like a like a nobody friend of mine <laughs> who uh he he doesn't really participate in tabletop anymore. Uh, he's he's a big Warhammer nerd, uh, and I remember one day uh, I was at uh, worked at a call center, and uh, I don't know who here has worked at a call center before, but sometimes when you're doing a late shift, uh, nobody calls, so you get some time to do <laughs> other things. And I would paint minis, uh, just waiting for the phone to ring, uh, and I was super proud of this one mini. Uh, it was a Skaven model for those of you who are Warhammer nerds uh, and I had spent like three days working on it and I felt like it was really good and I went over to show him and he took it and he was like yeah this is a good starting point and I was I was like gutted <laughs> I was like well guess I'll die and I, I took it back to my desk and I sat down and I was like man that sucks uh, but then an hour later he came back over and he said uh Hey, that was that was really shitty. I mean, I didn't realize it at the time. Like, let me show you right now what I would do t to improve things, and let me show you like what what techniques I would use and and give you some suggestions. Because like what I meant to say was that this looks great, but it could be greater. Um, and that that always really stuck with me. Is I, I want to make sure that if there's someone who's on their road to becoming a creator, I want to see them be that. If there's someone who's not sure about wanting to do something and you know they're afraid what if i mess up what if i make a mistake what if my first try isn't that awesome uh, i want them to do it anyway and then improve on the next iteration uh, so if you've been following me on twitter you'll know that like i i often shout out individual creators and not like a big group of people because i i want to give spotlights to people individually for what they're doing and that sometimes that's going to be tabletop people um, sometimes that's going to be individual artists or web comics that I'm part of that community as well. Um, sometimes it's it's teachers who, uh, you know, are doing a fantastic job in their own space to try to make the world a better place. There, uh, I think it, that's that's super important to me. And diving in in between all of those individual communities, like every day, I'm just looking at what someone else is doing and thinking, like, wow, that's so cool. I'm going to steal that. But also, they should get some credit for their creativity. Bro, I love that story, though, especially where you talk about, I call them uh, moments where passion is conceived, where you said you did something, you were proud of it, but then somebody else challenged your perspective of it, and that was that moment you had a decision that you had to make. Is this something that's just fun, and I'm passing the time, do I really care about their criticism enough to, like, internalize it, process it, and then apply it moving forward? Or do I actually care about this? Am I a little bit maybe passionate about this? And do I want to figure out how am I about to get better? Like that moment for me, I was I was enjoying painting, getting better, my skill progressing, blah, blah, blah. But anybody who follows me on Twitter, you've probably seen this, quote, fucking rock, end quote, mentioned mm -hmm. ad nauseum. And uh, Carol, Muses Touch, if you're watching this or if you watch this, so I painted this troll that I was really proud of. And I was like, this is dope like i can't wait to show it off but like if anybody has the reaper bones minis the gray plastic you know that those bigger minis are kind of shit when you open them out the box and they're all warped and bent over and shit like that 
so I wasn't good at any of the techniques to straight straighten or uh, straighten them back out. You know what I'm saying? Like, so my idea was I'm gonna use this rock and I'm gonna prop it under the troll's shin, so that way on the base it'll stand upright just against this rock. So I put it all together. I hadn't even painted the base yet or anything like that, but I finished the troll and I showed that all over the internet. And it was like, that was the moment that instead of it being a flood of people saying, oh, that's great, that's great, nobody said anything about the fucking troll. It was all the damn rock. It was people saying, are you going to paint the rock? You need to paint the rock. The rock's not painted. And that was that moment <laughs> for me where I was like, I'm either going to say, you know what, like, forget this, I'm done. Like, I hit that point where now people are not anymore flooding me with praise. And so how am I going to react to it? And I swallowed my pride. I painted the rock. I showed the troll. Everybody loved it. And now it's a joke that we, uh, anytime somebody doesn't have a based mini, we always tell them to paint the fucking rock. Like, <laughs> so uh, I love those moments. Like, to me, that's what I call them. It's when passion is conceived. Until you hit that moment, it's just a fun hobby. You're not really passionate about it. Yep. In my opinion. I so really I love Thank goodness that. for people like that. Yeah, like people like that who are telling you like, oh, what about the rock or the people like, you know, Adam's friend. Um, we wouldn't be anywhere as close to where we are now and as close to what we could be in the future. I was uh, talking to somebody earlier, um, they like about art and sharing some of the stuff that I had. And I actually went back through this folder and I found the first drawing that I did, you know, like three years ago of that first character and just comparing it side by side. And if I didn't have, you know, my mentor who was kind of just slowly forcing me <laughs> out of my comfort zone, like more and more and more. And I think that it's really great, um, the kind of community that we have, uh, TTRPG, Twitter, you know, all these different people from different walks of life uh, to be able to help us keep ourselves motivated and help us push to do better. Um, and it's exactly like Tommy said, it, it's that passion moment of where you're like, okay, well, I could either be upset about what they're telling me, um, or I could just be like, well, whatever, I didn't really care. I'm just trying to get this thought out of my head, work on something, put it to paper, or you can work on it and make yourself proud uh, every single day. So I love that. I loved your stories, you guys. Great. I think for me, um, I'm going to, I'm going to, take it back so I was not a nerdy kid uh, I didn't grow up playing video games I didn't grow up playing TTRPGs uh, I didn't start playing TTRPGs until I was in my mid to late 20s and um, and that was that was like two years ago no I'm kidding um, it was <laughs> that was that was 14 years ago yeah roughly 14 years ago at this point um but, like, if I really had to go back and pinpoint sort of, like, the initial point that would have taken me there, uh, I have to credit Rockney S. O'Bannon, the creator of Sequest DSV, um, <laughs> who uh, ultimately, like, at the time, I was, you know, like a middle school going into high school age kid when that show was on the air had no idea that fan fiction was a thing, um, but was creating it all the time in my head because of that show. And, uh, and like was constantly like mentally playing out these, these scenes in my head where I like would take a scene from the show and insert myself as a character into the show. And so essentially I was like having almost like a TTRPG setup in like a sci-fi environment in my head without other players you know when i really go back and think about it um but now nowadays when it comes to like the active community and people that i know um i mean kind of like adam said like there's so many people doing so many amazing things many of which i could never do like i am a terrible artist i'm a terrible artist um you know so like i admire all of the artists who can who can bring people's characters to life i admire um people like kyellen who can create music that like people hear it and go oh that would totally fit in my game here or i can absolutely envision this piece there um you know different different people like that but then for me, where I am more of a player 
um, I especially take inspiration from like the content creators who are the writers, the people who can can come up with whether it's a new class or a new scenario or a whole homebrew campaign or a whole new system. Like I respect the hell out of those people. Cause I'm like, I, I can't like, we go back to being or, bad at math. Like, you know, systems that, you know, you have to figure out numbers and how is this balanced and that sort of thing. I can't do that. Like I can't do that in my head. I can't come up with that, you know, unless I really sit down and focus, which is never going to happen. Um, <laughs> but then the other players too, like I look at people like Star Shinobi and David Tilstra and, um, <clears throat> oh my God, so many, uh, so many people out there that I've played with, um, Dev Makes Things, Ray Mayhem, um, you know, Ben from, uh, Lawful Great Adventures, uh, pretty much everybody on the Roll for Chaos crew, like, I look at all of those people and I'm like, man, I want to play like them, you know, like those are the people that push me to want to play better and not just like, I want to understand the games better, which is part of it. Like I want to understand more systems and understand them better so that I can teach other people how to play them. But also like they push me to want to be a better role player and be a better table mate, you know, teammate, if you will, table mate you know, cause they're so good at it. And so I'm just like, oh yeah, I want to be like that when I grow up. So yeah, that's, that's where I get it from. <laughs> um, all right, let's see other questions. Um, okay. Uh, Ray Mayhem came up with this question. What is the wildest, craziest, or stupidest thing you ever did in a game? Bonus points if the story starts with what had happened was. <laughs> <laughs> so normally my PCs are me uh, because I'm not a great actor and uh, I just enjoy being myself. So they're always normally like dirty, frail druids or really weak wizards. Uh, that's pretty much what I play. And uh, but I'm always like that kind of voice of reason. Like I might be a schemer and a planner and uh, thinking all these crazy thoughts, but I'm really uh, kind of methodical and timid when it comes to actually uh, doing something. I'm not aggressive at all, especially with NPCs or anything like that. I'm normally real laid back and passive, easygoing. Well, uh, we have been going through our latest campaign. There have been like two uh, sessions, like three and a half, four hour sessions where there wasn't much combat. And we were exploring these ruins, and we got to the bottom center of this ruin or whatever, and this giant, like, otherworldly creature comes out of this sarcophagus or whatever. And uh, I was like, you know what, Tommy? This is the moment. This is the moment when you pull out the X card and uh, you do something out of character. So I used this awesome magical bow that the DM gave me, probably because he thought that I was the most responsible person in the party to give this magical bow to. <laughs> and I immediately, without, without saying anything, just started launching arrows at this dude. And the whole time the DM, I could see by James's face that he did not expect it and he was not happy about it. And you could tell by the way he was presenting it, he was really giving me the opportunity to stop volleying arrows at this thing. And luckily, long story short, my character got a heart condition after the fact, but no one died. But he said it's only because, and he showed us the roll, and he actually didn't roll to succeed in TPKing us. So that's definitely my most wild moment. The one time that I was like, you know what, this should be fun. I'm pretty sure he's the bad guy because of circumstances. He wasn't the bad guy, but he did almost kill us because of my uh, unnecessary volley of magical arrows. That's my story. <laughs> I respect that. I'm not the best PC. You know, sometimes if I just feel like adding some spice, I might, you know, toss something in there real quick, see what happens. Bam. <laughs> right? It was fun, though. <laughs> I think um, 
wildest, like, just encounter ending to something, like, dice rolls all kind of magically working together. Um, and spoilers for Storm King's Thunder. That's, all right, I'll go there. First. There you go. Um, so, our group, um, we were finally fighting Imrith, like, this ancient blue dragon. Whole big thing kind of going on. And my character had gotten a Warhammer that was a nine life stealer. And I was down to having one charge of it left. Um, and as you know, dragons get, like, all of these uh, legendary resistances, things like that, that they can do. So we're getting into the thick of the fighting. You have to, they have to be under 100 hit points. I have to roll a natural 20. They have to fail a pretty uh, easy to, you know, succeed save, especially for a dragon with all their bonuses. All these things had to happen. And I rolled my natural 20. They were at, I think he said, like, 98 hit points at that point. And I just, I really excited on the end of my chair. I was like, what happens? I was like, you got to make this, like, what's the save for this? Like, you got to roll for this. Um, and just the look on Alex's face as he rolled the die and just looks down. And we're all just kind of waiting for it to see what happened. Um, Imrith rolled a natural one. So uh, my, <laughs> my cleric with uh, big hair and horns. <laughs> Got to jump down, bring her warm hammer down, and crack the skull in half. Stealing the soul of a dragon out, which we actually had kind of come up as a thing later. Uh, they were no longer able to be back. It just destroys her soul, and she's dead. Nothing can happen. No save against it. I think other than maybe a wish further down the line. And it was just so great, because we played this campaign for, you know, like a, a year. It was like in a home game, in person. We're just like jumping out of the chair, stealing it. It was just the best kind of energy that I've ever had. It's probably the coolest thing I've ever done in my life, and I didn't actually do it, but everything just lined up perfectly to make it be successful. Or he 100% could have just lied about the dice roll just because that would have been a great moment, and I'll never know because I'm not the DM. <laughs> I don't see <laughs> but I, it was just that was the craziest the dice have probably ever been. Awesome. Uh, I've got... I, I'm like a forever DM, so I don't have any cool player stories, because the one time I played, I played a, played a dwarf! And uh, <laughs> I was a cleric, and so I just healed people and frowned mm. as they got hurt. Uh, but I have a, a friend of mine who I'm going to pretend that his story is my story, because he does not do great at role-playing, so... In order to make up for that and to not hold in, in his mind, he's holding down the group if he's not role playing. Right. So he doesn't want to hold down the group. He doesn't want to not do anything fun. So the, you know, like the tenants, the bonds, the uh, uh, in in fifth edition, there's um, um, the whole table of like things that your character can follow. And everyone's like, these are stupid. These are worthless. No one listens to them. They're good for him. He's the type of player that stuff is for because he needs to say to himself, like, what does my character do? He's not like an like a cool improviser or anything like that. But he's so much fun because when he commits to a plan, he just commits to it. Like no matter what the plan is, and it always results in his death. And I'm I'm always trying to like I'm always trying to pull him back. I'm always trying to like are you, are you sure you want to do this? And he's like my character would do this absolutely. He's jumped off a tower directly into a skeletal dragon and died. He has one time um, I, I wanted the group to run away from a, like a fight that they were obviously losing. So I was telling them like, yeah, like this, this other team of NPCs is they're super healthy. They're looking fit. They're really hot. You probably shouldn't mess with them right now. And he, he picked the fight while he was dying. He spat in the face of the wizard that was murdering him. It was, it, and it's, yeah. it's amazing. Cause everyone's always like, wow, like, you're such you're so deep into your character but like his trick is that like he picks the course and you cannot steer him away from it so the the best <laughs> the best culmination of this is they were he was playing he decided to play a kind of like he, he was a he was an elven <clears throat> wizard who hated humans and that was that was his shtick he just hated humans anytime he saw a human he was like i don't care if they live or die whatever i'm done with them they're human they're stupid and at some point in the dungeon, they encountered a human child who is just an NPC. I just made a human child as an NPC. And he's like, well, 
I'm gonna have to kill this child because it's a human. And the whole group is like, hang on, you can't... <laughs> maybe, th maybe think this over, this is a little crazy. And my buddy's like, you know, I honestly, I don't know what to do as a character right now. So this is just the course that I'm gonna go. And it took about two hours, but they eventually decided to exile him on a mountain. And that is, they didn't kill his character, but he was exiled through a planar portal to another dimension where they all, as as a group, unanimously agreed he would come back for revenge one day, and that would just be his exit from the campaign. And I just, I literally sat there silent while they just debated with him. It was, it was wild, but I'll never forget it. Nice. Awesome. Um, I don't, I don't play much anymore. I'm, I DM almost exclusively now, so. I'll set the Wayback Machine for first edition when I was a teenager. <clears throat> and um, we had, you know, whatever my friend's group was, three or four of us, and we played all the time. Um, we had our regular characters. but And we didn't really... Um, <clears throat> well, okay, so there was this other group of friends of ours that also played. We found out that they played too. So we had we finally got together and said, all right, we're going to have this big adventure and we're all both of our groups are going to play. So we all get together and bring our favorite characters and I brought my dwarven fighter and he had a vorpal weapon. <clears throat> and um and we didn't have much backstory. We weren't really big into role playing, but so I just had a couple of things filled out, but the only backstory was his hatred was red dragons, probably because, you know, his parents were killed by a red dragon, the typical trope. <clears throat> well, the, the sort of leader, my friend who was the leader of this other group, was playing a wizard. So we're going through the adventure, but really we're we're sort of rivals, right? So it's it, it whatever the adventure was kind of lost its meaning, and we were just trying to find ways to scheme against each other because we were teenagers. So um, I stopped, I had my character stop to like investigate some treasure or something like that. And the wizard's like, and the character playing the wizard said to the DM, well, I'm going to sneak up on him and polymorph into a red dragon. I'm going to kill him. <laughs> so I turn around and go, well, my dwarf didn't see you polymorph. He just knows there's a red dragon behind him. So I'm going to swing. Natural 20. Cut his, <laughs> cut his head off. He was so. Awesome. I don't think. I don't think we ever played together after that. It was just <laughs> awesome. Would that turn him back into your friend because he took damage, or I guess the damage carries a... well, the... How did that work with the four? First weapon? edition was something else. Yeah. yeah. First edition. I mean. Dead was dead, more or less. The decapitations to decapitation. Right, if if, you, if he had taken damage, he would have been back into his friend, but literally cutting off his head. Yeah, was, I think the corporal thing kind of. He's polymorphed into a corpse. Right. <laughs> That's I'm kind sure of the penultimate mistake, around. isn't it? Is like you have this moment to do like a cool thing, or like you think you have like a big, cool weapon moment, and you're like, this is gonna be so good. I'm gonna do this, it's gonna be tight, everybody's gonna clap, <laughs> but the thing is, is that at any moment, you can roll a one. Right. Yep. And you, you forget in those moments, you're like, nah, it's gonna be great. You see it, you're like, I'm gonna jump like the, like the Air Jordan silhouette, and it's gonna be great, but you can fall. And it can look stupid, and like, yeah. I feel like I do, I do this so much because I have a like low dexterity character. Uh, we play a classless system, uh, and when you build your character, you have to pick from like disadvantages and advantages to balance each other out, right? So for every cool mm -hmm. thing you can do, there's like a really bad thing, too. So like, you know. I might be like a weapons expert and you know uh you know a incredible bomb maker uh you know a, a 10 foot tall bear but I'm also like a hated species in the universe and you know I have moments of insanity due to the <laughs> fact that I'm a human sleeved into a bear body and so I do stuff that's like not a great idea all the time and it's <laughs> 
it's never ending. And a lot of the time it's like, I feel like I could make that move. And it's like, you can't, you don't have no dexterity. <laughs> you can't, I know you feel like you, I know you <laughs> want to make that move. Like you feel it, like this is it. I've got to jump, I've got to save my friend. Cause it's like me yeah. and my best friend and we're constantly trying to help each other, save each other, human shielding for each other. Got to help my friend, did you say that? my friend say that to me say that to my face and it's like no you shouldn't do that you're gonna get in trouble and i get in trouble every time like clockwork i've not learned we've been playing this game since the beginning of 2020 and i've gotten worse like we just we have to it's just like honestly like it's just like what adam is saying like you have this line and you have to walk it it's like i have to show up for my friend that's at this point that's what the game is about like we get a you get that moment and people who play tabletop games uh you've had this like you get this moment in your heart where you're like i, I think i know what i have to do like yeah this speaks yeah. to me i have to do this i know it might not be a great idea and for me like as a explosives expert, like often the idea includes a bomb and it's like, of course it's going to go badly. Oh, well, like what, <laughs> why yeah. we have to try. And we lean hard into the natural ones because it's like, that's where the funny is, right? Like the, mm, right. the more you screw up, like the better the story gets, because then like, if you screw up, it's like, now you have to like creatively problem solve into the next level of what do you do? What, ha look what happened. Now what? Right. You've made a mess. Now what? You you threw yeah. a spitball. It didn't hit the wall. It hit that guy. Now what? <laughs> and like, then it becomes richer because you just screwed up. I mean, like, and we screw up daily. I, but the only time that we screwed up beyond repair was <laughs> the first episode. <laughs> um, <laughs> I decided to jump into a hole instead of take the elevator and I died. And... <laughs> <laughs> and we had to like re we had to retcon that because like you know it's 2022 now we've been playing this game since like 2020 in the begin like there are like a hundred episodes of this and it's like the first thing I do is die and that was the moment where I learned I was like okay this is what it means to have no dexterity but also everybody was like take the elevator what's wrong with you you know oh, and I. And it kind of just has evolved from there, so believe it or not, I'm still here. Except for the time that I drank poison, that almost ended me. I probably should have taken one of the 300 hints. Never drink anything that a stranger gives you, I guess. But, you know. Yeah. I wish I could be that kind of player sometimes. It just like, reminded me of something. I, I, I don't know if it's just my personality type, but I, I don't typically pick the chaotic path. I will think of something creative, but I won't just be the one who kind of just like, eh, like I'm just going to do this crazy thing. Except a few weeks ago. Um, so we were we we're playing in a rhyme game at a very responsible character. Um, we were transitioning from that into some more homebrew kind of a thing. Uh, so we end up in Stygia, and Levistus has trapped us there. Uh, we had just gotten some really interesting items from the end of rhyme. So I know that I need to get us out of Stygia in my brain. That's what my character would want. So she drops a scroll of summon Tarask on Levistus uh, in his icy prison and wrong. then tries to plane shift out because why would I know that plane shift doesn't work if he doesn't want it to in his domain? I'm like, this is a great <laughs> idea. I was like, the Tarask will keep him busy. We'll plane shift out of here. I'm like, this will be great. This is the best. And the look on my husband's face when I'm the one who did this of <laughs> all the other incredibly chaotic players that I mother. And I'm the one who throws a Tarask on a, you know, a Prince of Stygia and just screws everything up. We had to like end the session because it's like, okay, well, like, now all this stuff that we were doing there like what do we do what happens um but it was my moment to just be the person who's like <laughs> fuck it let's do this that's so um, real so, though like you can't nap 20 every moment in your life so you know? good. Yeah. it felt i want to live my life like that felt so good taylor i was like i love i live for that that's what i do every day <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh god i wish i could but i'm just i'm just the soccer mom Who's like, oh my god, children, can we please 
Like, who needs healing? I, I'm a cleric all the time, except for that campaign, too. I mean, in my normal life, like, I'm a control freak, but at the same time, I'm the wipeout song. Like, <laughs> you know, no. I've got We gotta to acknowledge, go. though, not just the extreme wild card failures, but if anybody in combat is like me, where I'm a range sniper, like any shooter game I play, I hate, like, run and gun, being up at the front. So, uh... Dexterity fails, stuff like that. Doesn't have to be a nat one, just one below that uh, target yeah. to hit. You yeah. might be 20 feet in front of your target with no <laughs> obstruction. It's brutal. And <laughs> still miss that hit. So you I no longer make fun it. of stormtroopers. No. Yeah, I no longer make fun of stormtroopers because of that. So. <laughs> There's that very whole... little give there. Uh huh. The, the, the helmets, the... they can't see right. Yeah. yeah. Right? That's how I feel rolling the dice. I'm like, God damn, every single arrow misses every single arrow. Why? I just want to inflict one point of damage. It doesn't That's always all I want to inflict. Sometimes it just bounces off, right? Right. No, no, I have great DMs. So it's always, you know, I hit, but I don't inflict too much damage. But I know. I'm a DM. I know I didn't hit that shit. Come on. <laughs> it's like it grazes off of their armor. They move their shield up just in time. They just describe it. Right. Yeah. Right. Don't fluff me. I know I missed. Yeah. Okay. What a win! <laughs> You've got It'll like come the back me initiative. Right. <laughs> Miss pop right. up. Yeah. But that that idea that uh, that you were talking about where of course I'm never gonna roll on that one, I'm gonna roll on that twenty, right? <laughs> That's the that mentality is the only reason anybody ever pulls from a deck of many things. The otherwise you would always Fair. you would always just leave it. <laughs> Why would you ever do that? <laughs> Because why, why would you give that to the most chaotic character, too? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> like some, don't do that to some us. people just want to watch the world burn. <laughs> that they uh -huh. The world they created. It's just, some oh. of us are just trying so hard, but we're huge and sloppy and we don't know a lot of stuff. <laughs> Listen. Chaos introduces purpose. It's okay. Everything has a reason. We're trying. <laughs> I will right. say, though. I think that Jason brought up a great point. It's like you should walk into every single day with everything you do, assuming you're going to roll a nat 20. Because if we could all just do that, then we would probably at least roll a higher average. Yeah, well. It's like I'm, you could fail, but you could succeed. Unless you're going to get something. And it could to be another, great. Another negative dimension of death and just. No, no, no. That's no, okay. I know. Never, never pull from a deck of many. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's. <laughs> If like, be confident, one, not stupid. If you take away one thing from the stream tonight, never pull from the deck of many things. <laughs> never pull from the deck of many things. Unless you're just me. done. I'll do it for you. Yeah. I know. Which, which is the next card? Come on, I know it is. Yeah. <laughs> you had a good life and you're just feeling, you're feeling the vibe, just pull a card, whatever. Yeah. yeah, man, don't worry about it. Harness that nat 20 energy no matter what. Never yeah. speed before doing it today. Go, go get them. Had to be Nihilus' Look, favorite watch game. Out. Stay low to the ground. You'll be okay. <laughs> you got this. It's all you good. Do it. I believe in you. <laughs> Even if you are low decks. <laughs> all right. Well, we are just getting to the point where we're running out of time. So uh, there was one last question that came in. So what I would like to do is this. We're going to go back around and have everybody remind us all of who you are and where we can find you on the internet and anything that you have coming up that you want to share. And I would like for you to answer this question that came in from Ren Rendernev. And the question was, what fruit flavor is your gel gelatinous cube? Oh, yes. So... <laughs> Uh, so we'll go in the reverse order from when we started. So, Taylor, we're going to start with you. <laughs> oh, you messed up. You messed up. <laughs> Here's the thing. My gelatinous cube is tomato, baby, because tomatoes are good luck and, um, you know, riboflavin, whatever. <laughs> uh, tomato is a fruit, so should have thought about that. You got to eat the whole thing now. It's on your plate. But um, that's me. I'm Taylor. Uh, or Tay. You can pick. Uh, I've evolved as a human, so I have multiple faces. But I primarily live on Backwater Bastards, which is a podcast that releases bi-weekly now because we realized that once a week was nuts. <laughs> it's super, super edited. Lots of sound effects. Lots of sparkly little things. Uh, we were killing Dan with once a week, so meh. 
but yeah, so Backwater Bastards, we actually have another show that you can listen to if you're a patron. But um, yeah, that's my thing. I'm Cleo on that show. If you've ever heard it, that's me. I'm the bear. I don't sound like this, so you know, you can't see me, but you can hear me. Uh, and in the future, now that we're in 2022, I will be on a couple different streams. They've not started yet, and I have permission to talk about two of them, which is one with Valor Studios, and uh, it will be a water deep 5e adventure. Uh, you know, red sky, dark sun, a group of courageous heroes trying to save the city and all the people in it that can't save themselves so turns out that's us and running Feywild with nat one fun uh which is kind of like a jumanji situation where a bunch of regular people end up in the Feywild. whoops uh of course they call me for that because i'm out of my mind so i'll fit in there um <laughs> i'll be playing a grandma that uh sort of forced my way into the table to play with my grandsons and in this world I'm a barbarian but like a really generic Conan kind of barbarian because I was given a pre-generated character sheet and then I added a couple little baby things to it as my grandma self so that's gonna be wild and that's me yeah and I show up in random places uh, sometimes I'm allowed here but you know only very sparingly because I break a lot of stuff but uh, <laughs> she steals yeah. all my toys <laughs> I steal I'm I'm kind of bad, you know, I, I, it's just, I mean well, uh, and I'd love to be your friend. So you can see my Twitter name, uh, if you want to be friends, if you want to make stuff, if you want to collab, I do a lot of different stuff, uh, let's chat, um, bang, next. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for coming back. It's always a pleasure to have you here. We need to schedule you more frequently than like once a year, because... <laughs> yeah, because we do. I'm out here. <laughs> uh, Tommy, tell us about you and what flavor is your gelatinous cube? <laughs> For sure. Uh, so flavor, orange, my drink's orange, everything orange. I love orange. Uh, that's my answer there. Uh, Luna, thank you again for having me on your time tonight, the cast, everybody. It's been a great conversation. Again, my name's Tommy. I'm Matt from Matt Productions. Um, if you need uh, battle maps, if you need miniatures painted, I have three, I think, different uh, supplements available, all D20 based. Um, if you just want a personal project, whatever, I'm down to just help you improve your gaming experience. Because even if I can't play with you, uh, if, if I can do something to help that you're using, then I feel like I'm right there with you. And that's my whole goal at Math Productions is uh, to give back some of the love that you guys have given me. So. Thank you guys again so much for your time, and I uh, hope to be on a, again sometime in the future. It's always a great time. Yeah, and and uh, poor Tommy gets messages from me all the time. Are you free? Because we had someone back out. <laughs> um, so I know that we'll always be having you, you back again sure. in the future. Um, uh, Jason. <laughs> uh, my gelatinous cube flavor is lime. Because uh, I find that like the other gelatinous cube flavors, like black cherry, are kind of overly sweetened. The lime is right there. <clears throat> um, you can find me, Shadowmane, on Twitter. You can read my writings at shadowmane.com. Uh, on Drive Through RPG, I just released the Hint uh, module for the Cipher System, which I talked about before. You can also see that I just did a live play with the guys from Cypher Unlimited. And you can see that on YouTube if you search for the Cypher Unlimited channel. Um, the next thing I'm working on is, uh, because I do weird things, is a one-shot where you can play a character from Gilligan's Island, but they are marooned on the land of the lost. <clears throat> okay. So, Hell yeah. The dream. The dream. Right? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> That's about it for me. Oh my god, I love that. That is awesome. <laughs> that song's gonna be stuck in my head now. <laughs> Which one? Like right in the vibe. Land of the Lost. I was like Gilligan's Island, but more danger. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> it could be Gilligan fighting off the flea stack. <laughs> I mean, you know. Only if you eat lime gel gelatinous cubes, though. <laughs> Only if. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for uh, for coming back on again. It's been a pleasure having you. And uh, Adam. Oh, nope. Jessica. Sorry. Oh, my God. 
I skipped right over you. <laughs> That's okay. I'm I didn't here. want to put you on the um, spot again. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, uh, so if I was a gelatinous cube, my flavor would be raspberry because they are my favorite treat and they're very yummy to eat. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry, the really old vine, uh, but I love raspberry flavored things. Uh, yeah, so I can be found on Twitter or Instagram. I do character art, a lot of D&D characters, um, and I'm open for commissions. It's under my pseudonym, Ina Coffin. So I-N-A underscore K-O-F-F-E-N. Um, so you can always check it out there. I've actually done art for um, a few different things, different publications. I did something for Tournament of Doors, which I know Luna is going to be in. Um, they're working on that whole recording process. Uh, so you can definitely check out Tournament of Doors on in- on Twitter, Instagram. Um, I just recorded a one-shot last weekend with Fey Earth in the Fey Earth setting, which was great because it was my first time doing anything that wasn't D&D. I got to be a rogue for the first time and just had a blast. Um, I know he's going to be working on that recording and be releasing it as well. Um, so another chance to actually see my face. Uh, if that's something you want to do. Um, and then a lot of my art can be found in Alec Azam's publications uh, on Twitter, Alec underscore Azam. Uh, he just released last month the Occultist, which is a class. I got to play test it. That was my character that dropped a Tarasque on Levistus. So you know they're badass. You want to be one. Mm-hmm. Um, the Treasures of the Pirate Court, uh, this big uh, labor of love from our very first campaign. A lot of the pirate NPCs and there are characters that I got to help design. Um, so being able to do the art for that was always fun and working with my husband is kind of nice to share that passion. Uh, but yeah, Ina underscore Coffin, you can find my art. Talk to me about D&D characters. I really love it. Um, and thank you, Luna, for having me on. This is a good first experience. Yay, I'm glad. It's been wonderful having you here. <laughs> um, we'll definitely have to have you back again sometime. Uh, now it's Adam's turn. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm Adam. Uh, if you're following me on Twitter, or if you're not following me on Twitter, I'm 34th Gingerbread. I'm I'm a little triggered because, y'all, the gelatinous cube is supposed to clean a dungeon, and you're gonna go through a dungeon smelling like tomato or orange, or or strawberry. I'm going for mint, pure. Winter fresh blast. That thing is going to go through each corridor. You're going to go in there. It's going to be spearmint hitting your senses hard. That's I that's you were to like say it. That they were set up fruit, them, and I was like, we eat shrimp. No, no, <laughs> yeah, I mean, no. Let's not. It 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 cleans. It's a little. It's a Roomba. It's a see-through Roomba that just goes through. If a Roomba was tomato flavored, we'd be eating them. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I That's can't. True. I can't. That's Don't true. follow the dogs her and cats would be less afraid. <laughs> or more. <laughs> My cats would try to eat them. <laughs> I, I mean, maybe they're delicious. Anyway, I'm a writer. Um, I I do a lot of things. Uh, when it comes to D and D, I do adventures. Uh, I do a lot of narrative stories. Uh, my Adventures and editorial uh, have been enrolled and told. Uh, I have an adventure in Splinterverse. I'm pretty much freelance, so if you need an adventure or if you need something cool to set your players up with, I'm, I'm probably down for it. Uh, I'm working full-time on getting my own world supplement out there that I'm trying to organize for uh, as a way for multiple groups to be able to work in a fantasy setting that is open to basically any interpretation that you'd like uh, rather than having to go through Forgotten Realms or a place that you may not know. Uh, you can start with a open world that you can build up from and, and have the foundations for and most importantly support multiple groups which I'm hoping will be great for local game stores um, but also schools uh, for all those teachers that need to do after school activities. Uh, it's called Teldromir and you'll be hearing a lot about it over time the more and more it gets closer to completion. Uh, I have a lot of different writing projects that you'll also see. Um, everything that I do, I have to wait a year in advance to be able to announce. Artists, you know that. Uh, fortunately, everything I did last year is coming out soon. Um, there's a horror anthology called uh, When They Saw Us, They Saw the Dead, and I've got a short story in there about a woman who is trying to bring back a recently deceased uh, partner by traveling through a, a kind of mystical riverboat journey. Uh, I have a comic about pirates 
that's coming out. So it's a little one shot, and it's an anthology all about pirates. So if you like pirates, that would be a thing. Follow me on Twitter. I'll tell you tell you when we get a date for it. <laughs> uh, and if you like uh, superhuman horror, then you should be reading my webcomic Folklore, uh, which is all about a group of survivors traversing a post-apocalyptic North America where all of the superheroes in the world uh, were either stripped of their powers or turned into abominations based off of the powers that they once had uh it's still ongoing we release a couple issues a year because we my artist uh colin tanway who's incredible uh he's got a full-time job so you know it takes us a while to be able to create stuff um but we we get about two issues out a year and it's been going for a while so if you've never read it before there's a lot to read right now those pesky real life jobs. Yeah. <laughs> Get in the way yeah, of everything. Really. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Adam, for coming on. And thank you, all of you, for, for coming to hang out. My gelatinous cube would be watermelon flavored. But like that artificial Ooh. green, like Jolly Rancher Jolly watermelon. Rancher? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's the best watermelon of all watermelons. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Um, so that's, that's mine. And it would be like, you know, that dark green, like the Jolly Rancher, you know? So there you have it. Um, I am Gamer Mom Luna. This has been Tales from the Tavern. We're here every Sunday night, just about every Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time, 5 p.m. Pacific time, where we answer all of your questions from chat. Every week I bring on a different group of five guests and, uh, and then we do this all over again. And it's always a lot of fun. If you missed any of this episode and you want to go back and catch up, the VOD will be available immediately after the stream, or you can look for it on YouTube uh, sometime later this week, or you can catch the Ears Edition, which comes out reliably the following Sunday after the episode, um, and you can get that wherever you get your podcasts. So we are going to, let's see, we're going to drop a raid on my dear friend, uh, Bose Bailey, who is uh, super sweet uh, and she's playing a, playing a little game right now. So we'll go over there and say hi to her. Uh, in the meantime, um, you can catch me again this coming Tuesday over on Todd Moodmouse's channel. We will be playing Mouse Ritter. I'm very excited about that. Uh, and it should be a very good time. I'm playing a little, little mouse. Uh, I think her name is Gwendolyn, something along those lines. Anyway, should be a lot of fun. I'm really excited. Twitch, uh, TV forward slash Todd moon bounce. He's right there in chat. So drop him a follow if you, if you are not following him already also, um, that's it. That's all I got right now. So I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Have a, have a great week and, uh, I will see you around. Uh, Discord and on the Twitter sphere. And uh, thank you again all for coming to hang out. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Tales from the Tavern. You can catch this podcast recorded live every Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific at twitch.tv forward slash Gamer Mom Luna. All of our questions come directly from chat, so we never really know what to expect when we go live. If you ever have a question or would like to add something to the conversation, feel free to reach out on Twitter at GamerMomLuna and use the hashtag TFTT. You may just get to hear it answered. Thanks so much. I never know when to stop. <laughs> just keep just waving. Keep waving. Wave forever. <laughs> just keep waving. Just keep waving. <laughs> One day it will all end. Ha <laughs> ha